The Ukrainian airstrike on the Marinovka Air Base in the Volgograd region of the Russian Federation on August 22 caused large-scale destruction of key infrastructure and equipment, the UK Ministry of Defense said in a statement. The agency published several photos showing the damaged airfield. According to British intelligence, the result of the strike was, four aircraft shelters destroyed, three aircraft shelters damaged, an antenna radome destroyed, auxiliary buildings and open storage facilities destroyed. On the night of August 22, Ukrainian military personnel struck warehouses with KABs and fuel at the Marinovka airfield in the Volgograd region of Russia, informed sources in the SBU confirmed to Radio Liberty. As noted, Russian troops actively use this airfield for bombing the front line in Ukraine. Russian telegram channels, citing eyewitnesses, also wrote about a series of explosions at the Marinovka military airfield in the Volgograd region of the Russian Federation on the night of August 22. Local residents reported a drone attack and air defense activity. Volgograd Governor Andrei Bacharov later confirmed that drones had struck a military facility in the region, causing a fire. Voters turned out in Russia's Kursk border region on Saturday for local and regional elections, despite Ukraine's incursion into the territory. Russian state TV showed footage of local residents voting at polling stations in universities and other public institutions. Russians will elect governors in 25 regions, legislative assembly members in 13 regions, including two in annexed Crimea, and scores of local officials. The most important thing is that people go to vote because we want peace, said one local resident, Ekaterina Sherbakova. Last month Kiev made a surprise move to seize territory in the Kursk region and still occupies land there. после всяческих прилетов, после дронов, после вот этих всех, уже мы все это видели, поэтому нам уже ничего не страшно. И самое главное, что люди идут голосовать, потому что, да, реально, мы хотим мира, мы хотим, чтобы у нас в Курской области был мир, покой, чтобы все жили счастливо, долго. Вот для этого мы идем сюда. А бояться нам уже нечего. Курский народ, мы люди сильные, и лично меня ситуация сейчас с сиренами, с работой ПО никак не угнетает, я к этому спокойно отношусь. Как вам в таких условиях получится? Мы привыкли. привыкли. Нормально, нужно знания получать в любом случае. То самое время, когда необходимо проявлять единство, приходить всем и показывать свое воле и заявление. Это наше конституционное право. The Ukrainian military is finally counterattacking five or six miles from Pokrovsk and its vital supply lines, making the Russian takeover of the city no longer seem inevitable. Forbes writes that Ukrainian observers blamed the months-long retreat of the Tavria Operational Strategic Group to the east of Pokrovsk not on a shortage of troops, but on the absence of fortifications. Not long ago, society was talking about how the transfer of additional brigades to the Pokrovsk direction would not change anything, notes the Ukrainian analytical group Frontelligence Insight. And now we see that this really does matter. There is no immediate prospect of dramatic changes in the Pokrovsk area. For now, Ukrainian reinforcements, at least the Karadag National Guard Brigade, the 12th Azov Brigade, and the 93rd Mechanized Brigade, are conducting small counterattacks, the main effect of which is to slow or slightly push back Russian positions. 
but the Russians cannot afford to lose momentum. Every day they do not advance is a day for the Ukrainians to consolidate and strengthen their position around Pokrovsk before the coming winter. This has implications for the war in Ukraine. The upcoming battle for Pokrovsk will be the culmination of the enemy's offensive operation in the southwestern theater of military operations in 2024, predicts the Ukrainian Center for Defense Strategies. The Karadag Brigade's fierce action in Selidovo, a frontline town southeast of Pokrovsk, may be the most significant of the recent counterattacks. For several days, the brigade's T-64 tanks have been blasting and capturing Russian tanks and combat vehicles trying to penetrate Selidovo along the main east-west road into the town, the high terrain in and around Pokrovsk encourages the attacking forces to be directed toward the lower southern approaches to the city. It also directs them toward Selidovo, whose peak is about 100 feet below the highest point in Pokrovsk. The Russians need to pass through Selidovo to be able to deliver a clear blow to Pokrovsk. Without ensuring security in the Selidov area, the enemy will not be able to sustain its offensive, the Ukrainian Center for Defense Strategies explained. But now that fresh and well-equipped Ukrainian troops are in Selidov and advancing, the capture of Pokrovsk by Russian troops, which previously seemed inevitable, is becoming less and less likely. According to Deep State, the situation in the Pokrovsky district of Donetsk region has changed slightly, it became known that the Russian invaders managed to advance. The enemy's advance was recorded in the city of Ukrainsk, Selodovsky urban community of the Pokrovsky district, which is located approximately 30 kilometers from the city of Pokrovsk.